Good morning, Year 4. Lovely to see you. Um, for our recorded lesson today, I'm going to be um, doing some sentence writing with you, writing sentences that start in different ways that will help you to do your English, which is after this. OK, um, we are going to be learning to um, start sentences in different ways. And that's all linked to the Jabberwocky, so it will help all of your writing today. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the visualiser and I'm going to do the rest of the, the lesson from the visualiser because got, I've got my pencil and I thought maybe I would do some drawing and some writing with my pencil, just like you will be doing. So I'm going to go up onto, see if I can share my screen with you, see if I can find my visualiser. OK, so here's my visualiser. Now the build up, the build up is what you are going to be looking at today. Oops. Can't write. OK. And you will remember the man on the horse. So I'm going to draw a horse. OK, so I'm just going to be really well. There's my horse and there's his tail and there's his neck and then there's his head and he's got a bit of a mane there. And the man is sat on the horse. And there's his legs come out and there's his head and then he's got this sword that comes out like that. OK, and he's holding his sword up and these are the hoofs of that horse and he's galloping and galloping up and down, galloping, galloping through the wonderful dark forest until he gets to this tree. Now this tree is kind of dark and spooky in my mind he is anyway and he gets to the tom-tom tree and the man on the horse, I'm going to draw the horse again, do excuse my very quick drawing okay and I'm going to just do an impression of the man with his sword like this okay I better do the tail of the horse, no oh, I've forgotten the head okay so he's on the horse and he is beneath the tom-tom tree and he's waiting silently. OK, now let's go back through this, the build up of the story. So the man, he's got his vorpal. Remember this, the word vorpal? Some of the words in the Jabberwocky are a bit strange, aren't they? He's got the, the vorpal sword. Let's have a look. I've got a W in sword. That's interesting, isn't it? And he might be clenching that sword because he's having to concentrate on riding and carrying that, that sword. He might even be swishing it about. OK, and he's bounding through the forest. And I know if we were in class together, we were coming up with these words ourselves and galloping all the way through that dark, creepy forest. But maybe I can imagine it, the, the ground thudding as they went through. And then he gets to that tum tum tree. And he's stays beneath the tree. I'll come to what sort of word that is in a minute. He stays beneath the tree, OK, or below the tree. And he stays there silently, quietly, maybe as quiet as a whisper. OK, now what we're going to do today is we're going to write not one, not two, but five sentences that start in a different way. Now I know, I'm going to underline that like that with a wiggle, I know that we have started sentences in different ways in our class, but I'm going to just work through my some five sentences just like you might work through your five sentences. I'm going to have to move my sheet up in a minute so that you can see all my numbers on my visualiser. So the first one I'm going to choose, I'm going to start kind of, I'm going to, because this is the beginning of my build up and then this is the end of my build up. So I think I'm going to start on this picture here where he's holding a sword. I'm thinking to myself how he's holding that sword and that gives me an idea for how I might start my first sentence. I'm going to write the word bravely. I'm just do a little arrow there and I'm going to come back to this spot in a minute. Bravely he held, I'm going to do my most beautiful handwriting, his and vorpal sword, I'm going to take some words, I'm going to do vorpal sword and I'm going to make sure I spell sword correctly with that W above his head, always holding it above his head isn't he, above and I'm going to go back to the beginning here, his head. Now I'm going to come to this bit here, bravely. I wonder if anybody can tell me what sort of word bravely is. I know if I were in the class, somebody would be able to put their hand up and tell me that that's a special kind of word 
okay, to describe how he's holding the vocal sword. And you would be able to tell me as an adverb. And you can start a sentence with an adverb. It's quite a nice, interesting way because we don't want to always start our sentences in the same way. So I'm going to read it back just to make sure it makes sense like we would do in class. Bravely, he held his vocal sword above his head. I've missed something out. Oh, no. I wonder if anybody can tell me what I've missed out in my sentence that starts in a different way. I can hear Eva calling out. I think I can hear Jessica. I know it's a comma. I've missed out a comma here. So I would say bravely and I would put my comma. He held his vocal sword above his head. And I would have done my first sentence, starting it with an adverb, which well I've done, Mrs. Nichols. That's an interesting way to start a sentence. Now I'm going to come a bit unstuck now because I'm going to have to move my piece of paper up. But I think I'm going to choose this bit of the story because I'm kind of moving across my across the build up and thinking of the way that he gallops and thuds and bounds through the forest to get to the tum tum tree. And I think I'm going to choose I'm thinking about how that would sound and I'm going to try a different way of starting this sentence. Aha, now it might be a bit squished up. I'm just going to move it without trying to um, so be patient with me. OK, so I think the noise of that galloping through the forest might be like this. Like, writing is not very good because I'm using my pencil around the visualiser. Like thunder. I wonder if anybody can tell me when you use like to describe something. Anybody know what that might be? I know I can hear some of you. I can hear Brody. I might even be able to hear Ellis. They would tell me that actually to that is when you say it's something like it's a simile. OK, a simile. Now, like thunder, I'll just do a little arrow there. Like thunder, um, I'm going to think what I can have. The horse galloped through the I'm going to see if I've got enough room on the visualizer. I'm going to come up a little. I'm going to just go down a bit and I'm just going to twist it so it's in focus. Aha. Uh -huh. OK. Like thunder, the horse galloped through the dark. I'm going to do a little arrow there. Creepy. I'm going to do a little arrow there and I'll come back to it in a minute. Uh, Damp. Forest. We'll stop now. Let's have a read back because we always like to read back our writing, don't we? Okay. So, like thunder, the horse galloped through the dark, creepy, damp forest. So I've started it with a simile. I need to check the spelling of simile because I sometimes spell that one wrong. I'll check that one in a moment. Okay. And if I've spelt it wrong, I will change it on the blog. Like thunder. Ah, what have I missed out here? I've started it with a simile. I need to use a comma. Now, my comma's flying above the line there, but that's because I've done an arrow there. But it would go down on the line like that. Like thunder, the horse galloped through the dark. Oh, it's three things in a row. I need my commas. The dark comma. Creepy. I could put and there. Damp forest. I've done the power of three, haven't I? Goodness me, when you put three things in a row, it becomes quite powerful. I could have even, if I'd have thought about it, made that creepy begin with a D and I could have had some alliteration going on in my work as well. Now I'm going to see if I can do one more. OK, um, I'm going to leave my piece of paper um, so that I can see. I'm going to go along my story, my picture, and I'm going to look at the Tom Tom tree. It's dark and it's creepy and the man on the horse is underneath. Hmm. I Beneath, I'm going to use one of these words. I'm going to write here, beneath, beneath the creepy. I've used creepy already. So actually, if I have more time, I might change that word to another one. So I don't want to use the same word more than once, really. Beneath the creepy tom-tom tree, 
I'm going to do a little arrow here for you to think about what I'm going to miss out on purpose. Beneath the creepy tum tum tree. Ah, uh, what am I going to write? Um, um, oh, I know. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that and I'm going to make it ancient. Because this is a word we've learned in class, that one. Let's make sure it makes sense. Beneath the ancient tum tum tree, uh, he waited. And how's he going to wait? I know, silently. I'm going to modify my verb, waited. OK, and I'm going to put the full stop there. I'm going to read it back and make sure I've got everything right. Now, it's interesting. I've used this word beneath. This is something that we've done in year four. We have done prepositions. Prepositions describe where something is in relation to something else. So we can see here that the man is beneath. He's underneath that tum tum tree. OK, so it's describing where he is beneath the ancient tum tum tree. What have I forgotten? I know that. I, who can I hear this time? I wonder if I can hear Ivy. I wonder if I can hear Harrison. I've forgotten a comma. Beneath the ancient tum tum tree, he waited silently. Oh, there's my adverb. Well done, Mrs. Nichols. That's really good to have an adverb in there as well. So what I'm going to ask you to do, I've done a, I've done a, a simile and I've done an adverb. And I've done a preposition. You might like to see if you can think of any different ways that you might be able to start your sentences. Now you can magpie any words that I've used, okay? Uh, or you could, I know that you're very good with your words. You'll be able to come out with some of your own. So I want you to see if you can not just do one sentence, not just two sentences, not three or four. I want you to do five amazing sentences in your most beautiful handwriting okay that start in a different way okay um you might come up with some other ways i've only done three for today but there are lots more different ways that you can start sentences now i'm going to see if i can go back to the to the main screen now so i'm going to go over i'm just going to keep talking and i'm going to go over to my screen aha here i am okay so you do those five sentences and you send them to our class email and then Mrs Nichols can read them and see how amazing they are. And remember, when you do your English proper lesson, you might be able to add some of those sentences into your writing and make your writing really, really fabulous. OK, now Mrs Nichols has never recorded anything on Teams before, so I think now that I need to go up to the three dots. Let's see if I can do it. And I'm going to in a minute, I'm going to stop recording. OK, so be amazing like you always are.